make a rise, but Nas was on the rise with him. So it was like, it was never a like, who was the one one? And then Biggie passed away. And then Nas had it for a minute. And then Jay-Z took it and ran with it for a numerous amount of years. And then 50 Cent came and ran with it for a numerous amount of years. This is me looking in from the outside, looking at New York rap. So to me, it would be either a Snoop vs. Jay-Z because he has been the king of New York around the time I've been the king of the world. Stay right there. Stay right there. That sounds like the ultimate battle, Snoop Dogg against Jay-Z. Now, I don't know if Jay-Z would do it because he's it's kind of like Dr. Dre, how you were saying. He, right. that, you know, Jay-Z, we love him, but Jay, Jay-Z, introvert, quiet, you know what I mean? But Snoop Dogg, Jay-Z, even though I'm not taking nothing away from 50, I just know that when your boat goes down and you got to swim ashore, it's a long swim. You understand what I'm saying? So this Snoop Dogg been, been swimming doing this 92. 25 years. 92, he been swimming since 92. And he just had he just had a, he just had a number one hit last year, Smile Bitch with with Lil Duval. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and I got it right now with Bonda MS that's blowing up on the Latin charts right now. You see what I'm saying, Snoop? So this is a hard uh this is a hard thing. Jay Z Snoop Dogg will be a real a, a real epic battle. Jay Z Jay-Z said too, don't get me. I'm not taking nothing from 50 Cent. I'm just saying, once you get to like that 15th song, like, give, run me five songs you're going to play off with. Off of Snoop Dogg? Snoop Dogg, five songs off the beginning. And I'm going I'm to play, play the first one, Deep Cover. Deep, Deep Cover, Snoop Dogg. Take it right. from there. Give me four more off the first four. G thing. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Yo, Snoop, that ain't fair, man. This, this, Gin and uh, Juice. Yeah. Gin and Juice. Yo, yo. Then I'm, I'm going to tone it down. I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Central seduction. Sensual seduction. Yeah, look. You do the like. Lot. Yo, Snoop, man, you're not fair for nobody, to be honest <laughs> with you. Man. Shout out to Afro B, my, my, my African brother here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yo, hey, for real, for real, real taught me how to talk to women on that song. I didn't know how to talk to women to for real show me how on that beautiful record. That's real shit. Like I used to always because you was like, like bitches ain't shit, but yeah, and you know that that for real was like, man, you women love you, man. You gotta you gotta be able to you know make your penmanship, you know, give them some love. Don't you love your wife? Don't you love your mother? Don't you? He started breaking me down like that to where it was like my pen had to write about me loving a beautiful woman as opposed to me downgrading a woman. Let me tell you something. You had me disrespecting women for a long time, Snoop Dogg. Like, Don't blame that like shit the... on me, Joe. Don't blame nah, that nah, shit on me. Nah, nah, I thought the fly <laughs> shit. Shout out to Hitmaker. Uh, I, I thought, I thought like, we had to just shit. You know what I'm saying? I had a record called This Is For The Hoes. <laughs> that was a Snoop Dogg-inspired tune right there. You know? <laughs> Hey, yo, Snoop, the way I promoted this is I had you in the deep cover video where you turned around and you said, hey, y'all, big pun, I see you got a snitch in your cat. Mm. Get out of here. And we did the twins deep cover, the dead in the middle, little, 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 little. Man, Snoop, man, when you did that for us, man, shout out to Chris, uh, Chris Robinson. You shot that in your garage. Yeah. You know how big that was for, you know, East Coast, West Coast tension? But, like, but Joe, you know how... how many times have we met before that? Me and you? Yeah. We met maybe two times before that. Right. So it was solidified. La Familia. La Familia, man. That was that. That's what I mean. I was familiar with you. You were familiar with me, so it was only family for me to do it. Yeah, man, that was beautiful, man. And and and, and I was did, trying. To, I was trying to break the the stereotype back then because remember it was real hard for East and West to do shit. And I was like one of the niggas. I was like, "Fuck that!" 
I love the niggas over there. I'm finna go do that with him. I'm finna go fuck with him. I'm finna go fuck with him and fuck with y'all niggas think. Let me tell you something, Snoop. Uh, when it comes to an ambassador of hip hop, shout out to Timbo the King, Timberland on the check. And when it comes to an ambassador of hip hop, nobody's better than you. And, and one thing I'm having a problem with is I'm getting older. I don't like getting old, Snoop. But somehow it looks like you embrace the shit and it's like you just take it how you take it. Like what I gotta do to say to myself, Joe Crack, you getting old, calm down. Because Snoop Dogg don't give a fuck. You know what, Joe? I think once you learn to embrace who you are and stay who you are at all times and learn to love you, you take that shit everywhere you go, my nigga. Like, I had to learn how to just be me, man. Like, even the way I raised my kids, I raised my kids in real life. You know what I'm saying? Not in no fake shit. Like, I talked to them as kids the way I talked to them as adults. So it was never, like, foreign language to them when they heard me give them information on what they need to be doing in life and how they need to be doing it. So we maintain a relationship to where we like friends now. And a lot of times when you got kids and you raise them, you they outgrow you and they don't want to be personal with you. They don't want to share shit with you because they feel like you was too too hard on them. And I always wanted to maintain a relationship with my kids to where they would be open with me and share shit with me because they were, basically they were kids that was given everything. And I watched kids that was given everything like self-destruct. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't have to work for shit. But I wanted my kids to understand that I work for everything that they got. So when the day comes for you to work, had that same instillment that I have in myself that I put in you. Let me ask you something, Snoop. That's it's good that you stay there. And if I'm I'm overstepping my boundary, you stop me in one second. But so like everyone knows you for smoking weed and all that. I don't smoke weed, but you smoke weed. Uh what what was it like or has it ever been like for one of your kids to say, Yo, dad, let me smoke with you when they growing up, 16, 7. This is a big challenge for parents around the world because a lot of parents smoke weed. And, but they don't want their kids to smoke. But the, I like it, it, I, did that happen to you? Man, that's crazy. You said that because uh, I was at my fucking Mario Van People's house, and we was uh, shooting something. We were shooting a movie at his house, and he had a bunch of teenagers and shit at his house. That's when YG was young too. YG was in the movie too, and he had like his little son back room that he was letting me use for like my little VIP area. So, you know, naturally, I'm in there smoking and shit. His son about 17, 18. His son ain't getting down, but all of the teenagers in the movie, they're in there smoking. Now a bunch of little rappers then showed up. So I'm in there smoking. I ain't paying attention, but my kids is here. My oldest son is in there. So we smoking. Next thing I know, somebody passed me a joint, and it's my oldest son. And I look at him, and I can't even say nothing to him because I've been smoking with the rest of these teenagers. So I take it and I smoke with him and I just, I'm like, I got to accept it because what kind of, what, what kind of father would I be to try to chastise him when I just been smoking right in front of him and I see it ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing wrong. He ain't doing nothing wrong. He's doing it in front of me. I'd rather him do it in front of me than behind me because now I can show him the proper way of doing it. So now that he's smoking with me, he's watching how much I'm smoking. When I get back to work, I'm not smoking. When I go back to shooting my scenes, I'm on a, I'm on point. I'm doing delivering my lines. I'm getting on my shit to where he can see, okay, it's a difference between being a drug addict and somebody that's relaxing themselves before we going back to work. So now my kids understand the dynamics of I'm not going to be a drug addict. I'm just going to relax myself before I go have my business. Yo, Snoop, boy, I've been spoken like a true G, man. Let me tell you something, yo. Yo, Snoop, let me tell you something. That is great because I think about it often. You know, uh, I got a couple of my friends that are my brothers, like brothers' brothers, and they smoke all the time, like in front of the kids. And I wonder to myself, and you know, I'm like a virgin. You know, I don't, I don't smoke, but I wonder to myself, what's gonna happen today when little such and such is gonna be like, "Yo, dad passed the blood." Um, and that that's why. You know, I thought about but, but asking But do you think anything's wrong with smoking? Me personally? Yeah. I don't think nothing wrong. It can't be nothing wrong. What happened to me is I smoked one time, Snoop. <laughs> and I ran out the crib butt naked. Middle of the night, Fat Joe the Rapper. 
I ran out the crib naked. Okay, yes. so look, look at look at Fat Joe the rapper drinking that wine, right? Like me and me and wine, we don't agree like that. <laughs> I drank the wine just to be cool with Snoop Dogg because I don't. But see how you, but you, you can handle it though, like a nip of that. I'm gone because I got Indian in me. You understand me? You heard of the Navajo tribe? I'm from the Nakaho tribe. You understand me? So when I get a little <laughs> bit of alcohol in me, I get to acting crazy. Oh my God, yo Snoop, let me tell you something, man. So let me tell you, I ran out the house butt naked, uh, and the girl came up on me because I smoked with a girl. I, you know. She pulled up on me. She was in my white Lexus. And she was like, you don't get in the car. I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm going to have a heart attack. I got to go to the hospital. I'm dying. I'm dying. So the girl gasped me to get in the car. We went around the block back in the crib, and I took like 10 cold showers. <laughs> and I, I, start, I start laughing for like an hour, but I never did this shit again. How do, you take, how do you take 10 cold showers, nigga? Did you get out the shower, turn it off, yeah, get back in? Yeah, I was fucking, bro. I was yo, <laughs> yo, trust me. I'm traumatized. And I went in and out the shower. I kept taking a shower. And then I started laughing for like a whole hour. And I said, yo, I'm chilling. And Joe, now that I wasn't, the Joe, studio, Joe, that wasn't weed, man. That was some other shit, man. Come on, Neff. That was some other <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> Look, you done been around me many times with me smoking and you got secondhand smoke and you ain't never acted like that. No, I've been the secondhand smoke motherfucker for real, though. Right. And it, I and leave it's... the studio. Let me tell you something. I leave the studio every night smelling like a giant weed. And, and... I say, when the police stop me, there's no <laughs> way I'm going to be able to convince them I ain't smoked no weed. I smell like a pound of weed, you know? Hey. Oh, yeah, every day they like this. So that lets you know that that's not what gave you that effect. Because the secondhand smoke is worse than the firsthand smoke. And that's first off. Yo, Snoop, man, let me tell you something, bro. Uh, man, my brother, man, I love you so much, man. I appreciate you. Shout out to DJ Khaled is on here, DJ Nasty on here. Another one. Another Man, this, <laughs> this DJ Khaled is something else, huh? I'm so, look, man, look. Khaled is one guy that I truly love being his friend. I love his energy. I love his, his come up, his hustle, his fatherhood, his mentorship, all of that shit. Like, he's the perfect gentleman. Like, that's, like, when I seen that shit pop up on Instagram the other day when Baby tried to show her booty to him, and he was like, oh, no, no. I'm like, see, that's what I'm talking about, like, me and you would have been like, hold on, let me see a little bit more before you turn that off. No, no, you know, a girl did it to me last night. I went like this. Stop. Talk to me normal. Stop. Talk to me normal. Please. Hey, yo, yo, Snoop, I did this one, though. Like, Stop. Talk to me normal, my family. I got love. I don't want to see it. No, I don't want to see it. Nah, I don't wanna see it. Please. <laughs> No, it's out of here. This quarantine shit is serious out here. Uh, coronavirus killing our people. Uh, blacks and Latinos the most. Um, what 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 could you say about this coronavirus? We can end it like that, Snoop. Because uh, uh, what what what, what speak on the coronavirus? I think we should just be a little bit more sharper with uh, with our movements. A lot of people quick to get out just because they say you can get out. But I think you should wait and understand where you're getting out to and why you should get out and when is the right time to get out. You know, if you don't see the NBA, the NFL, and things of that nature moving, then you shouldn't be moving like that because those are the biggest figures in the world right now that, you know, we waiting on them to see what's going to happen with the season and whatnot. And if they're not moving, we shouldn't move so quick. And just play it by ear and just make our moves precise. And if we do get out, make sure that we're wearing masks and gloves and protecting ourselves and not bringing it back to the house. And if we is, washing our hands and doing all of the things that we need to do to protect ourselves just to be precautious because it's safe. It's better to be safe than to be sorry, man. Man, I love you, Snoop Dogg, man. Thank you for stopping by, man. Uh, 
we, this was the late version of the Fat Joe show, the biggest show in the game. This is the biggest one. You know what yes. I'm saying? And uh, we love you. I appreciate you. You've always been 1,000, not even 100. You've been 1,000 with me. And uh, the game loves you. You're beyond a living legend. You're a king. You're an icon. You're a god on earth. And I love you. You hear me? I love you back, Joey. And you already know it, man. LBC, nigga, West Coast, nigga. What's up, Rod? What's up, Rod? What's up, Rod? I love you, man. I love you, man. Here you have it, Snoop Doggy, 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 Dog. The big, 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 big show. The biggest one in the game. Timbo the King. Why you got me on here, man? I just want to enjoy the show. Nah, nah, yo, Timbo, shout out to Jimmy. Timbo the King, the creator, co-creator of the versus battle. I mean, celebration of life. Celebration of culture. Uh, <laughs> yo, Timbo. Yo, Timbo. Yo. Celebration of life. Uh, what? Tonight, what you thought about the, the, the celebration of life? Um, you know, I went to a lot of concerts in my life and I've seen a lot of things in my life. But tonight, the way I felt, I ain't never felt like this in a long time, man. The last time you I felt like this, the last time I felt like this when I saw the Fat Boys, when I was like 10 years old. Fat, fat, fat boys. Boy, boy, and, boy, you know, boy, boy. You know what I'm saying? With the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's when I start beatboxing. I start learning. But tonight, you know, I'm sitting there listening to the Queens talk. And I'm like, yo, we got to love our women more. We got we to gotta, we gotta big up our women more. Like, the shit that they go through. We just, you know, as men, we don't, you know, we men. We, 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 we look at things different. But some of the songs and them words, and I heard them songs a million times, but it's like tonight I heard it different. And I was like, I was just, I was in tears and in joy, laughing, and I was sad. I was like, what the fuck is going on with me? But it's just the power of the I felt like this battle wasn't just about, of course they play hits, but I, didn't, I felt like it wasn't about just hits. It was about them as instruments, man, and them showing uh, sisterhood and and when you read the, these women's face and you, and you and you hear the music, you realize how many of us has hurt these women like that because yeah, it's coming man. from a pain, man. And 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 to hear those songs and 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 what they went through dealing with us is like wow. It was a like beautiful. We really thing did tonight. that. Yeah. It was a beautiful thing tonight. You know what I'm saying? It was a beautiful thing. I I I I, I wouldn't download the music again. And I already had it, but it made me go back and say, let me go listen to this in quarantine and really appreciate what's in front of me. Because I might don't really appreciate what's in front of me. I don't want to be dead and gone and be like, damn, this was in front of me and I didn't love it the way I should love it. Right in now, right about now, it's the time to appreciate everything, man. Shout out Pat Poos, Black Love, in the building. Um, I just, I just, you know, um, I love them both. You know what I mean? And but I, I love them both. But I underestimate <laughs> uh, Bill Scott. Bill Scott vocally, she's a problem. She's amazing. Yo, hey, yo, tonight she was like, she was going, she, she was, she was in, she was in, she was in a bag that I was like, huh. it was a it different bag. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was. It was a different bag, man. It was, it was different. Timbo, I appreciate what you're doing for the people. You and Swiss Beats with the uh, versus battle. Um, celebration of life. Um, could we get a hint towards who we thinking we going with next? Uh, Nelly and Luda. 
Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> that's what we call it. Put on your Air Force, put on your uh, Air Force Ones. Hey, I see you got your Jordan in the back. Uh huh. All course, right. You know it's the course. You know, you, you, know, you got bones. the black on black. Feels, yeah. 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 And you know throw the about, Let me tell you something, Nelly. I don't care anybody you bring on the planet Earth. If you throw, if you want to go and get a ride with me. <laughs> Hey, it must be the money. Yeah, it's going to go crazy. It's going to go crazy, bro. That's going to be great. Yo, Timbo the King, I love you. I uh, love you too, Joe. I know you hey. Dad. Happy Mother's yeah. Day, too. Whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Missy said, Missy said, I, I apologize. She said, you know I don't do, she said, tell Joe I don't do lies, but I sent a picture. <laughs> Yo, tell Missy, I just wanted to big up, uh, I just wanted to big up, uh, Chris Lighty yesterday. Shout out, LL hit me late. It was too late. Buster hit me too late. 50 Cent said he get too emotional with it. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. I get it. You I get it. Mean? Yeah. You know, but rest in peace, uh, Chris Light. Any stories about, um, the one and only who passed away today, Andre Harrell? You know, he was like, he always, like, he always say, he always say, that nigga, Timbo, that nigga beats is different. And he always, and I'd be like, you know, I, he always told me that I had something more in myself than what I saw in myself. And I was just like, I'm telling you, nigga, you going to shock the world. And I'd be like, I don't know, Andre, but all right, if you say so. You know, he always saw the gift in others that people couldn't see in themselves. Andre, you know, I can tell guy. you what they say behind your back because you wasn't dead. Motherfucker, no. Timbo the king. Timbo coming with that shit. Somebody dizzy if they sleeping on Timbo the king. The Timbo the king. You know, when you battle Swiss, how this whole shit started, I was scared for Swiss. You know, Swiss my brother. He on the Mount Rush. No, I was man. scared for him. I was like, yo, how you going to go up against the king? Easy, man, because that nigga's a king. He a king. <laughs> and y'all saw it that night. I knew what he was because I pay attention. I knew who to celebrate with. <laughs> Yo, but look how it turned into that. With this coronavirus, man, you guys are leading the way with the positivity. You guys are shining the light on the brothers and sisters who paid the way, who made timeless music that might have been lost, man, and you shining the light on them. You know, the baby face Teddy Riley. Things that never, the internet wasn't ready for that. IG wasn't ready for that, man. They broke. No, nah, they wasn't. They broke. Wasn't. Now they wasn't. ready. Now they, they, these ladies had 800,000, you know, yeah. clean. No problem. No glitches. No problem. They had it. They had it. They had it. And I'm glad they had it. I'm glad they had their moment. Yo. It was girls' night tonight. I'm proud of I'm proud of the ladies. Beautiful man. I'm proud of them, and I watched them all night, and I love them. I love you, Timbo. Stay up, my brother. All right, my brother. Love I you, Joe. Timbo. The Joker Show. The Joker Show. The Joker Show. Yo, Khaled, where you at? You want to check in? Khaled, where you at? Listen, man. God is great. Put God first. Monday, I come back, 8 p.m. Eastern, that's 5 uh, L.A. time. This is the biggest show on earth without twerking and showing titties. If you want to be informed, if you want to know about the culture, if you want to learn about the coronavirus, whatever, we got doctors, we got all type of people, we talking about real life shit here. It's lit. It's the Fat Joe Show, P. Diddy, Papa Puff, named it the Joker Show. We take Sundays off, because Sunday's over, you're my Chick-fil-A. Sunday clothes, you're my Chick-fil-A. You know, uh, and I'm working too hard on bringing Kanye West to the show. Next week, Adrian Bailon Tanashi. Tuesday, my brother Kenya from Black as Fuck. Wednesday, 
Mama Africa, Akon. We go to Senegal, Africa. Mama Africa, can you hear me? Love you guys, all the ladies. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Stay safe. God is great. God got us. Peace, y'all.